All right, so good morning and welcome to Christ Centered Foundational Yoga. Um, today we're going to start on our back, so I want you to create for yourself some sort of bolstering for behind the legs. So you can take two blocks end to end and go widthwise on your mat, and then if you'd like to drape a blanket or a towel over that to create some cushion. Um, or obviously, if you have a bolster or even some you know pillows in your house, feel free to use that. We're just going to create some softness for the backs of the knees. And then if you'd like to have another blanket or a beach towel, um, kind of curl up the bottom edge of that to create a nice support for the back of the neck. And then if you do have a strap handy, um, you may want to use that for today's practice. And if you don't have a strap, you could use something like a men's tie um, or a woman's scarf or even a belt that you might have handy. So coming onto your back, extend those legs out long. Take the arms wide, just allowing the palms to face up, but release the shoulders away from the ears. Just feeling some expansion into the chest. Make sure your neck feels nice and supported. So adjust for that natural curvature in your neck. And then begin to settle in. Maybe even shifting and moving to feel as grounded as possible here. And then mentally beginning to soften into the body by noticing any places of tension that you might be holding and intentionally relaxing them or softening into those places. You get to notice the rhythm of your natural breath without changing anything. We know that we can't change what we're not aware of. So just allow your breath to fall into a nice rhythm and pace here. You begin to slow and deepen your breathing. Breathing that breath in through the nostrils, feeling the breath move through the back of the throat, filling into the fullness of your lungs. Really expand and inflate those lungs. Hold at the top of that breath. And then when you feel ready, exhale through an open mouth slowly, taking your breath all the way to the bottom of that exhale, squeezing all of the air out. Pausing at the bottom of that breath, feeling that sensation of emptiness. And then receiving your next breath. As we focus our attention on those exhales and holding the exhales, it allows for a deeper, fuller inhale. So see if you notice that. And then at the top, hold that sensation of fullness for a few moments. And keep repeating that breathing pattern for a little bit here. Watching and regulating our breath helps to bring peace and calm to our nervous system, to our mind just allow us to be in a space where we're open and available to receive whatever it is that God has for us this morning. So today I want to talk about the fact that God designed you for a purpose and he's got a plan for you. I think sometimes when we're in the midst of a lot of things happening like they are in the world today, we forget that we were uniquely designed for a purpose, an expressed purpose, and that God has this overarching plan for humanity and for each and every one of us. We're going to start with one of my favorite verses because it really speaks to who we are and our identity. And it comes from Psalm 139. And David writes, starting in verse 13, for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. 
your eyes saw my unformed substance. All of the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God, how vast are the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. So I want you to just let that sink in for a moment, that we were created by the creator of the universe, specifically designed by him, his workmanship. And, and it says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And the word fearfully means reverently, respect tinged with awe. So God made you with the utmost respect and care, with this reverence to inspire awe. And the word wonderful means unique, distinct, set apart. There is nobody else like you on the planet and never will be. And you have a unique purpose to fulfill. Take a moment and let those words land. Take a moment and rest one or both hands over your heart. In the Greek, the word for heart throughout our scripture is cardia. And beyond the fact that it is the pump for our circulatory system, it's been said that it is the most essential part of anything. It's the center and seed of our purposes, our endeavors, our passions and desires. I've planted the seeds of your purpose in your heart. We're going to slowly begin to gather our right knee in toward our chest. You can take your hands just below your knee or behind your knee, depending on what feels best for your body. And then we're going to begin to draw circles or stir the pot with our knee, starting to open into that right hip capsule, lubricating that joint. Motion is lotion. We're also working into our Ascending colon, go in the other direction here too. Just continue to breathe as you move. We'll take that knee to the outside of our right rib cage and hug it in toward the armpit. Just squeezing out here. Hold and breathe. Now begin to guide that knee more toward the center of your chest. You might feel a stretch into the outer hip and even into that left, in, or I'm sorry, into that right inner hip crease. Take a hold of that knee with your left hand, take the right arm out to the side like a wing and then begin to guide that knee across your body just to where you start to feel a stretch. Keep your right shoulder grounded and maybe gaze over your right hand. Remembering that that breath helps us to release the things that we hold on to. 70% of our toxins leave our body through the breath. But what else can you release in terms of toxic thoughts, emotions, energies? Starting with our disbelief, or maybe our feelings of doubt or fear. 
to fully step into our purpose. So begin to unravel and then we'll take that leg in one more time and now interlace behind that right leg, taking the heel high. So like you're stamping your foot on the ceiling, we'll begin to point and flex here. Bringing some movement into those toes and the ankle. This also enables our calf muscle to operate like a pump to help return blood and lymph back toward our heart and the core of our body and the center of our body. And also it reduces edema if you get swelling in the lower extremities. Beautiful job. Go ahead and slowly bend back into that knee and then we're going to Come up, bring your forehead towards your knee as you squeeze. Continue to breathe here. Engaging that core. Release the head back down and then we'll extend that leg out long. Take a moment to come back into that reclining position with the arms out and just take it a scan of the body and notice the difference in the way the two sides feel. It's always fun to do that. Just notice those subtle shifts and changes that occur during our practice. <clears throat> Go ahead and bring that left knee in. Again, you can hold on below or behind the knee. And we're going to start circling the knee. Continue to breathe. Now we're working into the left hip capsule and the descending colon. Helps with elimination and digestion. Go in the other direction here. Just tracing the edges of that joint. Gently begin to guide that knee toward your left armpit and just squeeze here. Keep breathing. Make sure that right side stays grounded so we're not rolling to either side. Gently bring that knee more toward the center of your chest. Squeeze here. Again, breathing. And then gently take a hold of the knee with the right hand. Left arm comes out to the side. Keep that left shoulder grounded. And begin to guide that leg across the body. Take your gaze over your left hand. You can always continue to breathe out through an open mouth. It really helps the body let go. This tension we might be holding. Just kind of resetting our breathing. <clears throat> Assisting and letting go of those chemicals associated with fight or flight. Come back onto your back. Bringing that leg in again. Interlace your fingers behind the left leg. Footprint on the ceiling. And then point and flex. Bring up your joints, creating space in the body. Beautiful, draw that knee in again, and this time we're gonna round that forehead toward the knee, squeeze it out. Don't forget to breathe here.
Take a moment, lowering back down, extend the leg out for a moment, arms come back up to the sides. Take a moment to breathe. Breathe into all that space. We're going to slowly begin to gather the knees toward the chest, bringing our forehead toward our knees once again in a tight little ball. We are not meant to live small or shrink back. We're fearfully and wonderfully made. We're meant to be seen, heard, experienced, to live out our lives courageously and boldly. Go ahead and release that. Opening back up, and we're going to do this a few times. Feel how beautiful it feels to expand into the space. On the exhale, let's bring those knees back in, squeeze it out. Focus on your breath. Nice. Open this up, arms back out. A nice inhale, feel the space. On your next exhale, gather those knees one last time, coming into that tight little ball. Nice, lower down, we'll bring the arms to the sides like wings, flex into your feet and hug the thighs toward each other. We're going to slowly begin to make circles with our knees. So it doesn't matter which direction you go in. We're kind of tracing our sacrum. Make those circles pretty big. We're circling both knees in the same direction here. Just loosening into the low back, but beginning to kind of warm up our spine and our core. And then go in the other direction. Slowly roll to one side, and we'll pause there for a moment in a fetal position. You can move your props out of the way for the moment. Coming on that side. Isaiah 55, 11 says, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. The reality is you are that word that's going out from God's mouth. He spoke you into existence. And in that sense, we will accomplish what God desires and achieve the purpose for which he sent us. That word will not return to him void or empty. And the word purpose means to delight in, to take pleasure in, to be pleased with, to favor, to will, purpose or move. We're going to come into an all fours position. So if you'd like to have a blanket for underneath the uh, knees, feel free to take that for some additional support here. And then if you have blocks, we'll bring them near the front of the mat. We'll be using those in just a moment, but not quite yet. Take those knees wide, and if you're feeling in your knees, you can take a blanket, roll up behind, excuse me, behind the knees. We're gonna take our seat back and walk those hands forward. And I want you to kind of take a moment, I want you to come up again, Inhaling as you exhale, press back. Push into the mat with your fingers. Shoulders draw away from those ears. Inhaling, coming up. And then exhaling, pressing back. From here, walk the hands over to the right. We're going to get a nice stretch into that left side body. Draw the left hip back. Expanding into the ribs on the left, those little intercostal muscles stretching between each of our ribs. 
stretching into our lung tissue, just making space for breath. Breath in Hebrew is ruach, and it means wind, spirit, breath, or soul. It's the very breath that God breathed into Adam's nostrils to give him life, to animate him and give him a spirit and a soul and a connection back to himself. You carry that same breath. He breathed you into existence. And you need him to show up for every breath. But he inspires you with his purpose through the breath of the Holy Spirit. We're going to walk through the center and over to the other side, stretching into that right side, draw that right hip back, breathe here. Notice the feel of the stretching, the opening, the expansion. God delights in his purpose for you. We're going to walk those hands back to center, press into the hands, and then come on up. Let the feet come wide here. As we slowly lower down, we're going to bring our hips down. So I'm actually going to bring my hips to the blanket. So I just walked my knees back a little bit. Good. Coming onto the forearms. Slide your hands so that they line up with your chest. So the thumbs line up at the center of your chest. The big toes are going to press away from the body. Pushing into the tops of the feet, begin to engage the legs, draw your navel toward your spine. Then we're going to slide the elbows back toward our hips and toward our rib cage, getting the shoulders away from those ears. Good. Now you might want to just press up a tiny bit, coming into a little tiny baby cobra here. You might choose to come up a little higher. Good. On the exhale, we're going to lower down and bring the left cheek to the mat. This time on the inhale, lifting up, we're going to also pick up the right foot. Pushing into cobra, right foot lifts, if that feels okay for your body. On the exhale, lower down, right cheek to the mat. So you can always skip the leg lifts. On the inhale, we're going to come back to center, lift up, left leg lifts. Exhale, lower down, left cheek to the mat. Good. Inhale, coming up, right leg lifts. Exhale, lower down, right cheek to the mat. Inhale, coming up, left leg lifts. Beautiful. On the exhale, lower down, let's stack those hands and rest our forehead on our hands. But walk those elbows forward so you're Chest begins to open a little. And then we'll bend those knees and just tick tock from side to side. Just loosening into the low back here. Nice job. Float those feet back down. Bring your hands back alongside the rib cage, and we're going to slowly press ourselves up and then take it back to a child's pose. This time, you might choose to reach your hands back toward your feet, resting your forehead on the mat. Jeremiah 29 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. And the words here where it says plans to prosper you translates plans for welfare or shalom, which means wholeness, completeness, soundness, safety, health, prosperity, tranquility, contentment, friendship between individuals, friendship with God, and peace from war. So this is a promise and a prophecy both. 
And if we hold fast to this, no matter what happens with this election coming up or whatever is going on with COVID, all of this holds true. He has plans to prosper us, not to harm us, to give us hope and a future. And so when we hold on to that, and remember God is faithful, it gives us some hope. It gives us some encouragement to hang in there. We're going to slowly rise up. Bring those knees so they're directly underneath the hips. Walk the hands back just a little bit so they're not quite underneath the shoulders, just a little in front of that. With the fingers fanned wide, creating J's with the index fingers and thumbs. Press your chest back toward your thighs, feeling that stretch in the bottoms of the feet for the moment. Drawing the shoulders away from those ears, push the mat forward, engage the core. We're going to slowly lift up and keep the knees bent. So your chest is pressing back toward your thighs, knees are deeply bent, feet are about hip width distance apart. Hips are lifting up and back. And then on the exhale, we're going to straighten the legs and float the heels toward the floor. On the inhale, lift up to the balls of the feet, bend the knees, sink down a little bit. Exhale, straighten the legs, float the heels. Inhale, lift the heels, bend those knees, sink low. Good. Exhale, and lower those heels. Bend your knees. This time, we're going to walk the feet to the front of the mat. Taking them about hip with distance apart. So check in, bend the knees deeply. Your belly should be resting on your thighs. If there's space there, then bend your knees more. Draw your shoulders away from your ears and begin to let your head hang. The tail will begin to lift. Now, if your hands touch the floor, great. If not, then take blocks underneath those hands, but we're gonna start rocking back and forth, lifting the heels, and then rocking back and lifting the toes. Now, as you do this, feel all the four points of the feet eventually touching down as you also spread those feet wide and the toes wide. And now place your feet down, really plugging into the feet. On the inhale, bring your hands up to your shins, lift halfway for length. Straightening into those legs a little bit more maybe, but never hyperextending the knees, never locking the knees. Exhale, fold it out, bend those knees deeply. On the inhale, press into those feet, sweep all the way up. Maybe even take a little bit of a wide V with the arms, gazing up. On the exhale, bring your hands back to heart center. Nice job. Really plug into the feet here. We're going to shift our weight over to the left foot. On the inhale, go ahead and pick up your right knee. You can bring your hands to your hips if you like. We're drawing that navel in and up, keeping that core nice and engaged. And then on the exhale, we'll float that right foot over the left to the floor, or you can keep it lifted. And then bend both knees, bring the arms out into eagle arms. I'm sorry, into flying eagle. Lots of breath. Heart is nice and open. You're ready to take flight. On the next inhale, let's go ahead and come back to center and pick up that knee. And then we're going to step that foot all the way back. Pivot so it's on an angle. The back of the foot is parallel to the back of the mat. That front knee is tracking with your front foot. Okay? So check in on that. In fact, even press into that left thigh a little bit and kind of open up your right hip. So we're opening the hips, orienting them toward the sidewall. Bring the arms out like wings, release your shoulders back and down, gazing over your front hand. Beautiful. Turn your left palm upward and we're gonna float the right hand down, reversing our warrior. 
Keep breathing. On the exhale, come back up, finding warrior two. Make sure you're not leaning, so that upper body is stacking right over the lower body, over the hips. Hinge forward, and then float your left forearm to your thigh, reaching that right arm up, or even up and over. Just keep the shoulder away from the ear. So Proverbs 16, nine says, in their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. And the word establish means to direct, to make firm, to make stable, to prepare, to ready, to set, to order. On the inhale, come back up. It also means to make provisions for. On the inhale, let's reverse. So God is establishing your steps. Back to where you two. Exhale. Inhale, side angle. Exhale, back to warrior two. Feel strength in your purpose. And inhale, reverse. Exhale, back to warrior two. We're going to straighten that front leg. Slide forward. So this right hip slides back as your left arm reaches forward like somebody took a hold of it. And then float that hand to the inside of your leg. Press into that hand, create a little support for yourself to begin to open up into triangle. Checking in with your breath. Nice open breath here. Nice open body. On your next exhale, we're going to bend into that knee and windmill those hands all the way down. This is a great place for blocks. Take a moment in this runner's lunge. Just let that right hip sink down a little bit. Squaring the hips and leveling the hips over the mat. And then we'll go ahead and release that right knee down. Keep breathing. We're gonna do a little deeper hip opener. So toe heel, your left foot to the outside of the mat, bringing the hands to the inside, stacking right underneath your shoulders. So this little bit wider stretch. You can always feel free to release down onto the forearms or onto blocks like I am. Breathe here. Just a moment, you'll notice a big difference between these two legs because we did a pretty long sequence on one side. We're gonna slowly come up. Good, take that leg back, maybe bring the hands to the floor as we just shake that leg out a little bit. Good. And then come back into a child. Feel free, you can always take a down dog whenever we offer a child's, whatever feels best for your body. But do take a moment to rest. Come back. So when we think about the fact that, you know, in our hearts, remember I said that the heart is the center and seat of our feelings for sure, but the deeper innermost part of ourself, our passions, our purpose, our desires, our endeavors, all live there and it says in their hearts we plan our course we make plans but it's god who is establishing those steps for us and we don't have to see the finished product we don't even have to know for sure where we're going or how we're going to get there we just have to follow step by step as god orders those steps for us and proverbs 19 105 says your word is a lamp for my feet a light on my path. He will illuminate those steps in that path for us. We're going to slowly come back up into that tabletop position. Walk the hands forward a little bit. Fan those fingers wide. Tuck, tucking those toes, bring your chest back toward your thighs. And then we'll begin to lift, keeping those knees bent for the moment. And then maybe walk your dog for a moment here. So 
But the question is, are we living a surrendered life? Are we allowing God to be in charge of our steps? To lay out the roadmap for us? Or are we trying to do that in our own limited wisdom and our own power? Bend those knees, we'll slowly walk the hands, sorry, the feet to the hands. Bend both knees here, exhaling, belly to the thighs, release the head. Inhale, lift halfway for length, long straight spine. Exhale, bend those knees, rounding out. Inhale, sweep high, coming all the way up standing, press into those feet. Give you a big open arm stance. Whatever your purpose is, I surrender it to you. Exhale, hands to heart center. Take a moment to ground down once again. So really find all four corners, grounding into the floor. Begin to shift your weight into your right leg again, hands at heart center or on the hips. And then we'll pick up that left knee, flex the foot, hug the midline, draw the navel toward your spine. Good, on the exhale, cross the leg over. Maybe the foot touches the floor, maybe it floats. Bend into your right knee and then bring the arms out to the sides, client eagle. Where's your breath? Beautiful job on the inhale, coming back, pick up that knee, and maybe you pick that knee up with your arms. On the exhale, hands to hips, step that foot way back. Pivot that foot so it's parallel with the back of your mat. Front knee tracks with your front foot. We're opening into that knee, so maybe even take your right hand there and keep that thigh nice and open. Draw the left hip back, opening the heart and the hips to that side wall. Good, keep that open hip position and we'll reach the arms up. Gaze over that front hand. Will you go wherever God leads you? Will you follow those ordained steps for your life, your decision making? To bring forth this purpose, this plan, Good, turn that palm upward. We're gonna slowly inhale as we reverse. It's also known as exalted warrior. God is still God and he is still in control. We need to not ever forget that. Exhale, warrior two. Slide forward slightly on your inhale. Float that forearm down, reach up and over. Proverbs 19.21 says, many are the plans in a person's heart, but it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. This is very reassuring to me. Great reminder. On the next exhale, coming up, warrior two. Breathe, inhale, reverse. Exhale, back to warrior two. Inhale, side angle. Exhale, back to warrior two. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, warrior two. Now straighten that front leg. And then again, that left hip's gonna come back as we reach that right arm forward, so get long. Then float that hand down wherever it falls to the inside of your leg. Left hand high, nice open heart and triangle. Keep breathing.
On the next exhale, we'll windmill those hands all the way down, bringing hands to blocks in that little runner's lunge. Make sure you have a nice wide stance here. We're allowing that left hip to sculpt forward and down as the right hip, hip hugs in and back. Good, as you're ready, go ahead and float that knee down. A few breaths here. We'll bring the hands to the inside and then toe heel that right foot all the way over to the right edge of your mat or even beyond, just depending on what's available. And then you can stay here upright or maybe release <clears throat> onto those forearms. Humbly bowing, recognizing we need God. also recognizing he is God. This Holy Spirit indwells you. He is with you every step of the way on your journey to help establish you to assure your steps, to help you live out the purpose he designed you uniquely to fulfill. So we begin to bring those hands back toward you or come up, and then we'll take the foot back, shake that out. Nice job. Bring that knee down and then we'll sweep the feet to one side, coming onto our, a seated position, into a seated position. Take a blanket, we're going to curl it up just to elevate those hips a little bit. And now if you do have a strap handy, this will be a great time to make it available. We're going to extend those legs out, move the excess tissue out of the way so we ground down into those sits bones, edge of the blanket. Um, is where the edge of our seat will, will rest, not the whole seat. We want our tail sliding backward slightly. Good. We're going to go ahead and bend into the right knee. I am mirroring you. And we'll cross that right leg over the left, trying to stack those knees to the extent that we're able. Now, you can stay here with that leg extended, toes pointing up, or if it's available, bring that heel to the opposite of the other hip. So we're starting to stack the knees with the heels to outside, outside of our hips. Good. So if you have a strap available, we're gonna take that strap in our left hand, reach that arm up, bend the knee, uh, bend the knee, this is an elbow. Bend the elbow, begin to draw that elbow in. Good. Soften the shoulders, away from the ears. We're just stretching the tricep here. And then bring the hand around to take a hold of the strap. Now, if you don't have a strap, no big deal. Just walk your hands toward each other um, along your back. Elbows are gonna move in opposite directions. So that left elbow comes up, right elbow comes down. Draw your skull back into your forearm and lift through the crown of your head here. Keep breathing. Notice if the shoulders are rolling forward or lifting up and see if you can sink the shoulder blades down your back and toward each other. Where's your breath? Good, slowly release that strap. And then we're just gonna take the right arm across the body, take the left hand to the left shoulder, sink it down and then drop your left ear to your left shoulder. Bring your head back to neutral. We're gonna take our left hand to the top leg and the right hand behind. And then we'll lengthen first before we twist and then begin the twist from the belly, then the chest, then the head goes slow.
keep breathing. Bringing things out, also looking at things with a different perspective. Slowly begin to unravel from the belly, the chest, then the head. We'll go ahead and unravel the legs, shake them out for a moment. Just Go ahead and bring the left leg in now, and then we'll cross it over, trying to stack those knees. Again, you can stay here with that leg extended or bend the knee and bring that foot to the outside of your hip. Starting to stack the legs here, settling in. Now, notice if you're leaning too and begin to really try to kind of level those hips. So nice and solid in your foundation. And then we'll go ahead and take hold of the strap now with the right hand, so opposite our leg. Bend the elbow, bring that hand to the base of your skull, and then we'll take a hold of that elbow and hug that elbow in, stretching into the tricep, breathe. Release that and bring the hand around the back, walking the hands toward each other, maybe using the strap if you have one. Draw the shoulders back and down, the elbows move in opposite directions. So bringing that right elbow up, left elbow down, shoulders away from the ears, long straight spine. Crown is lifting up, lengthen through the neck. Where can you soften just a little more? Where can you surrender to the shape? We're gonna release the strap. Take that left arm in front, right arm under. Take a hold of the shoulder, release the shoulder down and then drop your right ear to your right shoulder. Don't forget to breathe. your gaze back up to neutral, unravel the arms. We'll take the right hand to the thigh, bring the left behind. Lengthen first, so press down, lengthen up, and begin to rotate from the belly, the chest, and then the head comes last. Keep checking in. Imagine you're bringing out a dirty washcloth, all that stuff that does not serve you. Nice, slowly unravel, coming back to center. And then we'll unravel those <laughs> legs, extending them out. Good. Move the props out of the way. Slowly begin to make our way down onto our back. Again, if you want to have something to support the back of the head, feel free. Gently draw the knees to your chest, rocking side to side. And I'm going to give you just a couple moments if there's something else that you feel led to do, like maybe you want a happy baby, maybe you want to just extend the legs up, the draining everything back toward the center, back toward the heart. Remembering the heart is the center and seed of our purposes, passions, endeavors, pursuits. It is the central most part of anything and the most important. Do what feels natural to your body. You can also do some rocking or take a little twist. You can even bring the feet to the floor with the knees bent and kind of tick tock those knees. I love to finish my practice this way. It feels so good. The 
but do what feels intuitive for you. And then as you're ready, make your way into your final breast position. So you might want to extend those legs out. Again, you may want to bolster something behind the knees. You may want something behind the head. And I just want to read a poem that I don't know the author to, but it really kind of speaks about the journey of life. It says, as you journey through life, choose your destinations well, but do not hurry there. You will arrive soon enough. Wander the back roads and the forgotten paths, keeping your destination in your heart. Like the fixed point of a compass, seek out new voices, strange sights, and ideas foreign to your own. For such things are riches for the soul. And if upon arrival, you find that your destination is not exactly what you dreamed of, do not be disappointed. Think of all you would have missed but for the journey there. And know that the true worth of your travels lies not in where you come to be at journey's end, but in who you come to be along the way. Taking these moments of rest to integrate the practice and let these words land.
So then begin to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Draw your knees towards your chest. Rocking here a few times from side to side. Eventually find your way over to one side, pausing for a moment as a fetal position position of new life, new hope, new possibilities, unlimited possibilities. When we get out of our own way and out of our limited mind and understanding, we can really begin to walk into our purpose and power. yourself up to a seated position, pressing yourself up using your core strength. Bring your hands together at your heart center. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and future. Be reminded, believe, trust in these words. And remember that God is with you wherever you go. Amen.